Hello everyone. Welcome to The Quilted Story, where every quilt tells a story narrated by you through fabric and thread. My name is Kathleen and I'm a professional quilt instructor and machine embroidery educator. But today, I'm here to talk to you about my upcoming release in my Etsy shop, maddieandme2.etsy.com. It's today's program is all about cross stitch organization and how these folders and keepers that I make help keep your projects all organized and everything in its place. So let's get started and talk about all the different items that will be coming in the next release, which is Friday, April 21st at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I hope that if you are interested in anything that you see here today, that you will jump on to my Etsy shop at 9 a.m. on Friday the 21st of April and try to snag one of these great project keepers and project folders in my that will be in my shop. So let's start off with the largest of my project keepers and it is called the Large Project Keeper. And this is what it looks like. It's like a booklet and it snaps shut. So there's four snaps on the side and these are heavy duty snaps. When you open it up, you will see that it has a front vinyl pocket and then the back has a vinyl pocket also. And this large one is made to hold the full size booklets or leaflets of your projects. So if you are working from a booklet or a leaflet, this is the size that you really want. And you can put multiple projects in one folder. So a lot of my customers have one for Christmas, maybe one for Halloween, one for patriotic and so on. And they organize their projects by that way. And then these folders will stand alone on a bookshelf so they can have it at their viewing, you know, they can see it on their bookshelf and they know that this one has all of their Christmas projects in it or another one has all their Halloween projects in it and everything is kitted and ready to go. And then it securely snaps shut on the ends so nothing gets loose or falls out of the Project Keeper. Now when you open it up, again, it does have the zipper vinyl pocket with the liner pocket inside so you have two you have both the front of the pocket and the back of the pocket so it's basically two pockets inside there you can view your items through your vinyl pocket or you can put it behind the fabric pocket if you don't want say your pattern to touch the vinyl some of my customers don't like their patterns to touch vinyl that's totally up to you it's a personal preference so that securely closes with a heavy duty zipper I don't use the regular zippers I use the heavy duty ones on these large folders because they are large folders and they require something of a with a little bit more um, security and that's why I use those heavy zippers now on the interior there is what I call the Floss Keeper, and it's another booklet that's sewn inside the interior of this little, of this booklet. And it's also snap shut. This one has three snaps along the edge, but when you open it up, it has batting on the interior so that your floss that you're working with, you can keep here securely on your floss bobbin keeper and then snap it shut as you're working on your project. And then over here, this red piece is a wool felt piece that you can park your needles or your pins or your clips. And that keeps everything secure because it does snap shut in three spots. And then the whole booklet snaps shut in four, so four spots. And as you can see, it's very sturdy. I use multiple layers of stabilizer, both interior and exterior. 
of the folder and the project keeper and that is what makes the product that you see here today. So this is a great way to organize your larger projects or multiple projects. And I also have another item that helps people organize. And this also will fit inside the large project keeper. And that is my floss bobbin keeper. And as you can see, these match in the fabric. This is the Teresa Kogut Stitchy Birds. And when you open it up, it has 30 slots for floss bobbins that are carded. So like if you wind your, your DMC floss or even your fancy floss, they fit inside these pockets. And I will show you, um, after I get done showing you all the main things, I'll show you how to organize my projects and my floss bobbin keeper. But this will hold 30 or more bobbins. It really just depends how full your bobbins are. And this item, once again, is heavily stabilized. So it will stand alone, just like this, like an open book on a tabletop. So you can view all of your flosses at a glance. And once again, this snapshot, just like all of my project keepers and project folders, it snaps shut along the edge for secure traveling and then this item fits inside the large project keeper in the zipper pocket so see i can put it right inside the zipper pocket and then all of my flosses are all organized i usually organize mine by number and or you can organize yours by color if you'd like it that way too but it does fit inside the zipper pocket and then i can zip it shut and all my flosses are secure in there. And then if I had, say, some fancy flosses and they were on the fancy floss card that they originally come on, I could put them on the other vinyl, in the other vinyl pocket on the other side. But that's how I organize mine in my project. I also wanted to show you, too, I forgot that this, this is a full-size leaflet booklet from Primrose Cottages and it fits inside this large project keeper. I just wanted to show you how that fits inside there. And you can put it so you can view it through the vinyl or you can put it behind the fabric pocket if you didn't want your booklet or leaflet to touch the vinyl. So that's the large project keeper and the floss bobbin keeper. And I'm gonna have them in several colors and several, um, fabric themes like this is this is both the stitchy birds and I have this in the red stitchy birds and I have it in the blue stitchy birds and that's the Teresa Kogut fabric by Riley Blake I really like this fabric I bought bolts of it I know it's hard to believe so anywho the next item that I have that helps keep your organized is what I call the spool cases. And that is, it's a little case, it's a zippered case, and it holds your threads, the 103s or the silks or the regular sulkies that are on spools. That helps you organize them, it zips shut. The whole back of it is quilted. As you can see, I have quilted the back panel and then it zips shut. And once again, this item will fit inside that large project keeper, just like the floss bobbin keeper will. Because I have a lot of customers that like to stitch with the 103s, so that's why we have the spool case. Now, you can also use your spool case for some of your notions. Maybe you want to put your clips in there, your snips, your little scissors, your needles, your pins maybe just a couple of the spools in there, or I use mine for my, my fancy floss that is still on the cards, you know, like from Classic Color Works or from, um, what's the other one? There's, you know, there's like several of them. They're all great, Color and Cotton, and they all make great fancy flosses. So I put them inside here because I keep them on the original cards. And then I can stick this whole item inside the pocket of the large project keeper. Let me show you how that looks. I just set it right inside and it will fit just like inside the zipper pocket. So if I have flosses and once again, 
still snap shut across the side. So then everything is secure and everything is in its place. So you have all the stuff that you need, your fabric, your pattern, your flosses, and then maybe your needles and your scissors. Maybe you use clips or those little round, um, those little round, um, they're like kind of like holders for your, like if you have extra fabric on a project, I use those sometimes if I have like a project that has a large piece of fabric on it, I will use it to kind of control the extra fabric on the side. You can even fit some of the hoops inside here also. That's totally up to you. I don't normally put the, oh, those, um, what are those things called? Those little white frames that people use. I don't use those, but um, you could get a small one in here, but I usually don't put those, those um, project um, holders in here. But that's, that's a large one with the two accessory cases, both the spool case and then the floss bobbin keeper. Those are the accessories that can go. And I have them all in matching fabrics, like, like I have them all for the Stitchy Birds in both red and blue. And then I also have them in a patriotic fabric that I'll show you in a minute. Now, the one that's the most popular right now, and it was my actual first design, and that was the regular size Project Notions folder. And this one is the perfect size. It's made on the same premise as the large one is. It's the perfect size for the smaller, like regular type projects. They're like a five by seven card. Here, it, here is the Patriotic Tiny Town by Heart and Hand. I'm doing all the projects of the Tiny Town. And that one fits in here just the same way as the large one does. Let me show you. See, I put my, those five by sevens fit in here perfectly. This also has the second lining pocket. So you can, the same way as the large one, you can have it viewed through the vinyl window or you can put it behind the fabric pocket if you don't want your pattern touching the vinyl. And then this is just the same interior floss keeper made out of the batting and then the wool felt needle parker where you can put your pins or needles or your clips. It's basically the same folder as my large one. Here's a large one in the red. It's basically the same premise except for the large one holds the full project um, booklets and leaflets and the regular size one holds the five by seven and the smaller like ornaments or smaller project cards. A lot of stitchers today are stitching the smaller projects because they feel like they can get them done. And this is perfect for them because they can put several projects, again, just like the large folder, you can put several projects in this regular Project Notions folder and organize all of the things that you need for those projects in one folder. Again, the same premise, it snaps shut. With it being smaller, it has three snaps on the side and it's secure. I use the same stabilizing techniques on this one as I use in my large one. I actually use a, a few extra stabilizing techniques in the larger one because it is larger and I want to make sure that it is strong and it is stable at all times. This folder also will stand up on its own like a book on your bookshelf. So that's the regular size one and I have that in a bunch of different fabrics. This is my patriotic one. I have several of those. I have the red stitchy birds. I have the blue stitchy birds. That's the Teresa Kogan. I have this beautiful Hawaiian floral pattern. It's a great one for every day. Here's the interior. If you want to see the interior of that one. And that one's real pretty. That's a regular size Project Notions folder. I have a really cute hot cocoa Christmas one. There's a lot of stitchers stitching hot cocoa projects for the upcoming Christmas holiday. So this is a great one for that. Real cute interior. 
I love this stripe fabric. It's on the bias and it's just, it's just really cute. I love to use stripes on my, on my zipper placquettes. So that's the hot cocoa one. Then I have Mr. and Mrs. Claus and that one's really cute for your Christmas projects with some like ornament tossed all over with a real pretty red plaid placket for the zipper. And then I have a really pretty Valentine one with hearts all over, tossed all over, and then some really cute printed fabric that matches it with the red and white stripe for the zipper placket. So that's my Valentine one. I have several of those also in the shop. I also have this farmhouse Christmas tree farm one that's really popular. Interior is black and red. Again, that same bias striped fabric for the zipper pocket. That's a really cute one for your Christmas projects. A lot of people are doing farmhouse Christmas in the cross stitch. So this is a great one for that. Now I have a really cute snowman one that is really popular. I love this blue snowman guy. For all your snowman stitching, a lot of, a lot of, of my customers do a lot of snowman stitching. Real cute polka dot for the zipper placket in an all over print of snow, like kind of like a blizzard for the liner. So that's that one. And then I have an everyday one. This is one of my most popular pattern fa or fabric patterns and it's the queen bee. It's got bees all over it, but I only have one of these. I have used my whole bolt of fabric of it. I've already sold all of them. So I've only got one of these. So if you are wanting one of those, you want to get there at 9 a.m on Friday, April 21st at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The interior is real pretty with this mustard yellow dot and mustard yellow zipper, zipper placket. I use the black snaps on this guy. That one turned out really cute. So those are, I have multiples of each one of those except for the queen bee because that's the last of my bolt of fabric but I do have multiples of most of those. So um, you should be able to, to snag one or two of those if you would like. Now, okay, I showed you all of the different size project keepers and folders. I basically have four. The large one, let's go over that real quick. The large one is called the project keeper and it holds the full size patterns and leaflets. And then the regular size folder holds the five by seven, the ornament size projects, the smaller projects. That's the small one. That's called a project notions folder. And then I have the floss bobbin keeper and that holds your floss bobbins, 30 of them or more, depending on how full your bobbins are. And it securely snaps just like everything else. And then the third item, or the fourth item is the spool case. And that holds your 103s or your sulky threads on spools. Or you can also use it for your notions, like your, your scissors. And you can even put a small pattern in there. I make these for my daughter-in-law and she uses the small ones for just small projects. She has, puts everything in that little zipper pocket and away she goes. And it's a quick one. I mean, you could use this, this, um, zipper bag for a lot of different things but they're because they're so versatile but they are set up to use for your your sulkies or your 103s so those are the four sizes of the projects for organizing i also have a stitchy stuff bag let me show you that that is i have these in several colors and it's, this is machine embroidered. This is a full size pocket. So you can put stuff in there. It is not sewn shut. The pocket is still the way it is intended to be used as a pocket, but it is completely machine embroidered. I have a multi-needle brother embroidery machine and I embroider all of the bags that you see in my shop. I have a lot of different kind of bags, but this is my, this is for my cross stitchers or my, 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 um, quilter friends. They like this stitchy stuff bags and it comes in several colors and it will, it zips across the top. Let me show you how I organize mine. I have another one here. 
It's in the pink. It's really cute. Let me get the handle out of the way. It has a really nice handle, so you can put it on your shoulder. This is the pink one. And what I do is, when I travel with my projects or go to a retreat or something like that, I put my projects all in this bag. And as you can see, I have some really large project bags in here and you can get quite a few all together in this one stitchy stuff bag. And then it has two little mesh pockets on the side and then the big pocket across the, the front. And you can keep all your all your stuff together, all your projects that are in project keepers or project folders, or even project bags that maybe you bought, you know, prior at another shop or whatever. You know, there's a lot of really cute project bags out there that people use to organize their project cross stitch projects. You could put them all in one bag when you go out the door. You have everything with you if you're going to a retreat or a stitchy day with your friends or you're traveling in some in some capacity with your stitching projects. So, and they do securely zip shut across the top, which is great. I like all my bags to zip shut because I'm forever dropping things and then everything falls out and it's a hot mess. So that's my stitchy stuff bag. And like I said, I have that in several colors. Now I wanted to also show you a couple other bags that I have, that I have made. I do a whole line of dog bags. It has nothing to do with cross stitch, but I have a lot of clients that have their favorite puppies. Here's one I just made for um, my hairdresser, actually. She um, want, wanted to order this bag for their, her, her sweet pups, Lottie Mae and Aspen. There's two dogs' names. These are large large embroideries that fill the pocket. This pocket is large. It is eight by 10. And I do jumbo monogramming and jumbo lettering. And so that is a very, very large, it fills the pocket front. The embroidery does all the, um, the letters. And then it has little white paws. This is completely machine embroidered. Once again, the same thing. The pocket is not sewn shut. It has the mesh pockets on the side and the zipper across the top. And this comes in several colors too. If you don't see this in my Etsy shop, just send me a message and ask me about them. And I will get back to you right away because I keep, my Etsy shop is open on my phone and I'm always available for any conversations coming through my Etsy shop or through my Instagram. So you can find me pretty easily. So that's my doggy bags. Now I also take that very same bag and I do jumbo monogramming on them. This one is mine. And this monogram is big. Once again, it's on an eight by 10 pocket front. It is not sewn shut. It's the same bag with the zipper across the top and it is a jumbo embroidered monogram. It's heavily stabilized so you don't see any puckering or any kind of weirdness going on with the actual monogram. So that one's really popular because everybody loves to see their monogram on a bag. So I do have those. If you don't see them in my shop, once again, just send me a conversation or a message on either my Instagram or my Etsy shop and I'll get back to you right away. So those are just some of the bags that I offer. I do have other bags. I just thought I would kind of throw those in there since I had those ready and I could show you some actual bags that haven't already been sent out. Now let me organ let me show you how I'm organizing my upcoming projects. They're my Christmas, I'm part of that Christmas cross stitch ornament thing that every, a lot of cross stitchers are doing this year. They're trying to stitch so many ornaments by the end of 2023. So what I did was I went ahead and I organized mine in my regular size project notions folders or the regular size. When you open it up, this I have a project on this side and you can see I have my pattern in there. I can't show you the pattern because it's a printout of a PDF, but I have, this is how I just keep my my carded um, variegated flosses. I just keep them on the cards and I put those in the front. And then behind here, I have like my fabric. It's already in there. I'm using black fabric. 
and I have my fabric all surged. It's in there. My scissors are in there. And then that, that side is just one of the projects. And then on the other side, I have this really cute project. They're little like sweaters and it's going to be an ornament. And um, I got it from one of the cross stitch magazines. And so I have all my stuff in there. I have the patterns. And then I have, I'm doing that on per perforated paper, which ought to be interesting since I've never done it before. <laughs> I'm a quilter. I cross stitch in the evening. I wouldn't say I'm the best at it, but I enjoy it. And, and I like to organize all my stuff no matter what I'm working on. That's why I came up with this whole line of patterns. I actually designed all of these patterns myself. I write patterns for a living and these are just some of them. I did a whole line of um, iPhone wallets and smartphone wallets years ago. And this is basically on that premise of those wallets. So pattern writing is not new to me, but I like to organize them. Everything I work on, no matter what it is, I organize my projects and this is just one of them. So these little sweaters, these little sweaters are going to be ornaments. I'm going to do them on the perforated paper. So maybe say a little prayer for me because I have no idea how this is going to work out, but we'll see. Can't be that bad, right? So I just keep all that. I have that ready and I just, I have, so basically I have two projects in this one regular size project notions folder and then i have a coordinating floss bobbin keeper and what i did was i organized it so that this half of the right hand side is all the ones for the projects on the right hand side of my project notions folder these are all the flosses for that and then these flosses are for the ones that I'm going to do on that perforated paper. Those little um, sand, uh, those little sweaters, those little Christmas sweaters are going to be Christmas ornaments. And that way, you can see these bobbins are full. And some of my bobbins had like a little bit of thread on, have actually two in one pocket. And as you can see, it all is secure. And it stays inside those pockets organized and you can view either the number or you can push them down further and just view the color if that's how you like to organize your flosses totally up to you but then it does snap shut just like all my other items and then that way all my flosses for those two projects are all in this as you can see coordinating because I do coordinate stuff I know it's hard to believe right <laughs> So that's, that's how I organize my Christmas ornaments. Now I do have four sets of these for my Christmas ornaments because you know, can't do just one, it's like eating potato chips. So then I went ahead and I did the little gingerbread guy one for me and that has, that has another perforated project in the pattern is in the back. What is that one? Let me take a look. Oh, this is the one that Vonna Pfeiffer did. Just love that. Can't wait to do those. I bought both of them. They're going to be done on the perforated paper also. So we'll see how this perforated paper thing goes for Kathleen because it's going to be the first time I've ever done it. My sister Lisa cross stitches a lot also and she tells me that I can do it but you know I don't know. We'll have to see. <laughs> so that's the front one and then I also organized my flosses in there. These are the ones for the front, and then this is the one for the back. And then once again, that snapshot keeps everything secure. And then I have one that's done in this really cute Christmas village fabric. And I have, what do I have in there? I have, oh, I have some Mill Hill in there. Never done a Mill Hill kit before either. Like I said, I'm a novice at this. Um, as, as far as the cross stitching goes, when it comes to sewing, I've been sewing for 45 years. So I started sewing when I was a young girl and I just love it. So everything quilting, sewing, embroidery is what Kathleen is all about. But these are the Mill Hill kits, got those in the back. And in the front, I have this other little, it's a Valentine project actually, but it's kind of small. So I just went ahead and stuck that one in there because I thought, well, I should be able to do that one pretty quick. And I also have a matching floss bobbin keeper for that one. And then I have my snowman one. It's a set also, 
got the snowman in the project notions keeper i have a hands-on design it's an ornament that's going to be in there you can see i have my scissors in there my little snowman and then i have this one is um gingerbread village it's one of the um have my scissors in there my specialty thread and my fabrics in there let me see if i got the pattern i do it's the country cottage needlework and it's the little one of the little houses i'm not going to do all of them i'm just i just picked out a couple of them to do for ornaments so and this is going to be done on um 32 count vintage country mocha two threads over two so i stitch a lot on this vintage country mocha by zweigart lugana and i really really do like it so that's my snowman one and then i have my flosses in my floss bobbin keeper so that's basically how i organized all of my christmas ornaments that i'm going to be stitching on this year i'm trying to finish up my haunted mansion by the tiny tiny modernist i'm at the back stitch stage which is not my favorite but as my sister lisa keeps telling me it makes the project come alive so i keep trying to tell myself that as i finish it up i decided i didn't want to start any of my Christmas ornaments until I finish that project. So I want to get that one done. I'm almost done, maybe maybe another week or so on that. And then I can get started on my Christmas ornaments and we'll see how far I get. If you hear screaming coming from South Carolina, it's probably me working on that perforated paper. <laughs> but say a little prayer for me. Hopefully I can get it done and, and do a decent job on it so I can make my sister proud anyway. So that is all of the items I wanted to show you here today. I'm hoping that you'll see something that you like and that maybe you'll come visit me at the next um, Project Keeper release, which is Friday, April 21st, 2023 at www.maddieandme2.etsy.com. No, you don't have to worry about memorizing that because I'll put it in the show notes down below so that you can just click that link and be ready to go. It will be 9 a.m. sharp Eastern Standard Time on Friday, April 21st. And that will be in my Etsy shop. I do have my Maddie and Me Too Instagram page. And that has everything that I'm working on or what's coming up. Or, you know, I like to do like little snippet films and stuff and, and upload it there also. So you can see what I'm working on. If You know, I, I also have my quilted projects there and my cross stitch projects to show progression of a project that I'm working on. So you can go there and see some of the stuff that I've worked on over, you know, maybe recently or whatever. I do show my quilty stuff um, there and I also have a Facebook page, but it's mostly all on my Instagram. So you can find me there at Maddie and Me to Instagram. That's my handle on the Instagram page. If you have any questions, you can feel free to send me a message either through my Etsy shop, through my Instagram, or through this YouTube channel. I'm hoping to get some more thumbs up and some likes because it's a little slow. I've been doing this YouTube thing almost a year now, and I think me, and then there's me watching these videos though, so. I don't know how popular there are they are but I'm hoping that eventually people will come back and and watch some of my YouTube videos and see what I'm up to just maybe get inspired and get that machine out and and make something fabulous just for you I hope everyone has a great day and see we will see you back here soon and hopefully on Instagram thank you very much and have a great day bye-bye now